Hello and welcome to Paper Crafting Playdate. My name is Robin Arbrecht at Really Robin Stamps and I'm delighted you are joining me today for episode 87. Today is March 31st, 2023 in real live time, but whether you're watching this live today with me or you're watching it on the replay later, um, super excited for you to be joining me today. So I decided we were going to focus on a stamping technique today called spotlighting. Very simple technique, but it's a real wow. And I liked that technique. I chose it because I'm also going to try to spotlight some things um, in the catalog and things that are changing. We're going to just focus on spotlighting today. So let's look at the table here and hopefully you're seeing all these beautiful colors and we're going to talk about colors today stamping up colors we're going to talk about retired things and you're going to learn a new technique how amazing is that right so much good stuff all right so let me make sure i'm seeing everybody's i think i am look at us we're good to go hello thank you for saying hi definitely say hi to your stamping friends and uh give each other a hello and a wave i love to see you talking to each other hi rebecca hey wendy hi Faye. hi tanya and sarah hi susan hi mimi yay thanks for being here okay so this week in um, in Stampin' Up World, <laughs> we, uh, uh, part, I can't even talk. It, it was a rough week. Um, so we got the opportunity to see the brand new catalog that's going to be released in May. Okay, super exciting, right? Um, and so there's so much information to process, um, even as somebody who's been through like 23 catalog transitions, it's still a lot to process. So I've been processing it and I thought we would process a little bit of today um, as we work on this spotlighting technique. So we have two lists that are available. If you're on my email list, you will get these today if you haven't already found them. These um, particular ones that I made a copy of here were um, made easier to read by another demonstrator named Deb Snyder, and she shared it with um, stamp with the Stampin' Up leaders so that we could use her version, and it's a great, wonderful version. So if you're new to Stampin' Up and you're like, what is she talking about? We uh, transition catalogs um, very frequently to keep everything you know, nice and fresh and new products, right? And so once a year, this annual catalog gets um, changed over and then um, about half of the items maybe, I'm not even really sure about that percentage, but a lot of the items retire and then we get brand new product. And then twice a year, we have this supplemental mini catalog that has more seasonal things in it that transitions twice a year. So each time that a transition happens, um, all the Stampin' Up! demonstrators go nuts. <laughs> Just kidding. Kind of, not really. They do, because it's a lot of information. And so there's a lot of things retiring. And um, this year, to make things more interesting, at this particular month for the annual catalog, we are also going to be doing a color refresh. And what that means is that there's going to be new colors put into the color palette and some colors are going to be retiring, right? And we're all attached to these colors quite emotionally sometimes because they're good friends. So that's always a big deal. So let's just get right in and talk about it. Um, so we have, I broke it down by numbers. If you were a numbers person, this will be meaningful to you. If you're not like me, it's just information. But here's the numbers. So there are 15 colors in all that are going to be gone and retired from the catalog. And let me just show you in case you're kind of still new. I'm talking about 
the core colors. Let's just move my, there we go. Talking about these core colors, right? So there's 15 of these colors that are going to be retiring and they will no longer be available. And so I've got the beautiful cardstock out here to, to share. 11 of those colors are from the core color families. So our subtles, our regals, our neutrals, and our brights. Four of those colors are from the 21, 23 in color. So we expect those to go away this year anyway. So that's how we get our 15. Um, then we have seven brand new colors. Um, well, they're not brand new, but they're, they will seem brand new. They're past in color, so they're returning. They're colors we've had in the past, and they're returning, and they're going to filter into those spots where those colors left. Then we're getting four brand new colors that have never been seen before, and those are very exciting. We just got to see those. This Here's the names of them. Azure Afternoon, Lemon Lolly, Bubble Bath, Pecan Pie. How exciting, right? They are all pretty amazing. You're going to love how these um, fit into the color families. And then we have four colors that are moving. They get to move from, from family to family. So we get to keep Fresh Freesia, but Fresh Freesia is going to be a subtle. Uh... Blackberry Bliss is moving to the neutral collection, and Pumpkin Pie is moving to the brights, and Gorgeous Grape is moving to the regals. So they're just, they're shuffling a couple of those colors around, but they're staying. And then we're going to get five brand new in colors. So we're going to get another set of five here, and those are pretty amazing. Look at the color names. Copper Clay, Wild Wheat, Boho Blue, Moody Mauve, and Pebbled Path. And they are beautiful, subtle, um, medium type colors, kind of um, subdued a little bit. Really beautiful colors, and they look pretty together, and I, I can't wait to see how they're going to combine with other colors. All right, so these are the 11 core colors that are going away, right? I'm going to use some of them today in our projects. And then these are the in colors that are going away, but we get to keep that fresh freesia. How exciting is that? And then these are the ones that I just talked about that are moving. Uh, to, they're, they're moving to a different color family. So you'll have to, you know, think about that. <laughs> All right, so let's get to our technique today. And we are going to do spotlighting. So this is a tried and true old technique where you take a piece of your image and you pop it up so that it stands out. So I'm going to start this technique with a piece of designer series paper. And this is perfectly penciled designer series paper and we love this one let me find the little sheet for it here so every year when that main catalog the annual catalog transitions all of the papers that are 12 by 12 um, retire so that is something to keep in mind if you are a paper person and you like to have all those papers on hand. I'm sorry, I'm adjusting my camera here because it's um, not staying put today. You'll definitely want to stock up on some papers and some of them are actually discounted. So um, you'll want to look into that. Now that last chance list that I just talked about is there and it's available. You can order those things knowing that they're going to be retired, um, or you can wait until April 4th um, in a couple days, and some of those things were going to be on sale up to 60% off. So you have to think about that. So let's start our spotlighting technique. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece 
out of this paper. And I'm gonna use a square shape, but I'm gonna turn it so that it's more like a diamond. And I'm just going to cut a piece right out of there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is spotlight this little piece. Look, I didn't even get that centered, that's all right. Um, so we're gonna spotlight this piece. And the how you spotlight it is you raise it, but then you also give this part color. So I'm going to color these flowers. nice bright flirty flamingo so I have my Stampin blends here the dark and the light for flirty flamingo and I'm going to start coloring the flowers now this paper is so great because it looks great black and white but then most of the pieces you can also color on and look at how it's shaded even with just adding one color it looks already so beautiful but we're going to go ahead and use our light and our dark. Okay. So I want to make sure that I add this color all the way to the edges. So already where the artist put all these little lines, that's where I'm going to add my darker color of Flirty Flamingo makes it so easy. Okay, oops, I forgot this one. And then anywhere that it looks like a line, I'm just gonna go back with the lighter color and blend it. Stampin' Blends, they're amazing. All right, so there's our pink, and then I wanna use Granny Apple Green for our Stems. They're going to make a nice, bright spring flower. Okay, I'll use the brush tip for the leaves. And then just like I did for the flowers, I'll add some of that darker granny apple. is everyone up to today? Thank you for saying hi. It's great to see your name. I'm glad that you're here. Tell me what you're crafting. Tell me what you're working on. Did anybody else go through the catalog this week with their retired list and mark things off? All right, so one of the other things you can do to make this stand out even more is color the background. And so I'm gonna use Pool Party here and do it very quickly, but I'm gonna just color the white part. Pool Party. So every inch of this little square that I'm gonna spotlight is gonna be colored here but I'm gonna show you some samples where I, I didn't color the background. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna create a, our spotlight. So we've got this piece here. And what you wanna do is you're gonna put it back into the place you cut it out from, but you're going to add a layer to it to set it apart a little bit. So I've already pre-cut a square. So this first square that I used, this is from the Stylish Shapes. So this is not retiring. 
So the one, this is one of the only things I'm using today that's not retiring. But it, the, that set is wonderful for this technique. So I'm gonna put that on this little piece of black. Actually, I want this border a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna glue it offset like that and then give it a little trim. Because I like just a little bit smaller matte layer. So we're going to make our card. I'm going to pull in the grays from this paper. So I've got a piece of basic gray. And then the card base is going to be Smoky Slate. So if you are on Facebook or YouTube and um, you were looking for me today, I, boy, this is crooked too. I'm going to trim this first. <laughs> when I scheduled this um, stream, I accidentally put um, April 1st tomorrow as the stream date without realizing it. And then today when I was trying to, oh my goodness, this is so crooked. <laughs> you know what, here's my, here's my tip for this. I don't know, I must have cut one of these pieces um, not quite square. So I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it. And, and I don't think I glued it on perfectly straight either, part of the problem. So sometimes when that happens on an edge, I mean, sometimes it just happens. I'll take my scissors or I'll take um, my take your pick tool and I'll use the flat spatula edge and I'll just kind of rough up those edges. And when you distress them, it doesn't really matter if they're even anymore. It won't it won't show as much. So let's just give this a little fix. And then it adds a little texture too, which is always nice. Okay, kind of curl that corner. Okay, that's better. Now I need to re-glue because that glue dried. So sorry about that, back to my error. It is March 31st today, and I thought I had scheduled it for March 31st because that's when I was gonna go live, but nope, I picked April 1st. So I think it was my um, it's my April Fool's joke to myself here. All right, now look how fun this is going to be when you put this right back in and those flowers line up with the piece behind. I'm just gonna go ahead and distress this one too. I'll just have some nice little ruffled shaggy edges. And then you pop this one up. So you just, when you put that back in, you want to look at all the sides and make sure that it's lining up with the flowers that are behind. There. So now you've spotlighted a piece of that background paper. Easy. 
So to finish this off, I took two of the smaller squares from the Silo Shapes and I cut out some of the other pieces of designer series paper just to kind of make a little arrangement of squares like diamonds. Do that. Go do it like that. And then we just need a greeting. So I'm bringing back this stamp set to show. This is Art Gallery and Floral Art Dyes. Let's see if I marked my page or not, but they, um, this stamp set and dies are on the last chance list. And they are both 60% off. So on page 39 of the annual catalog is where the stamp set is. And then the dies are located on page 171. So I think the stamp set's like $8.80 now with all these beautiful greetings. Um, and then the dies are 60% off as well. So these are fun, little, um, nice straight greetings. So I'm going to make this a thank you card. All right, how many people um, have done this uh, spotlight technique before? Is this a refresher? Has it been a while since you've done this technique? Definitely was one that I dusted off. It's been a while since I've done that. I just put a dimensional under here because I didn't want that hanging out there. Okay, cute. Black and white is always delightful. I was amazingly relieved to find out that the black and white gingham ribbon is not retiring. It is still in the next catalog. So I really had nothing to complain about this week. So let's add a little bit of this because we can. I'm gonna celebrate it. I got a lot of glue on my fingers already from that mistake on my card. I'll be sticky. Okay, I'll just add that little accent. Okay, so this is the basic spotlighting technique with designer series paper and specifically a designer series paper that you can color. So very easy to make that happen. So here is another sample. And this time using a circle die, same technique. And on this one, not sure if you can see, there we go. I put um, Wink of Stella on top, so it is not only spotlight, spotlit, <laughs> spotlighted, what's the past tense of spotlight, um, but it is also shimmery. 
So, and then I used the rectangle. I used the radiating stitches rectangle die and spotlighted the whole inside center. Colored it the same way with markers, but then I used a blending brush to make the background um, a lighter yellow. So similar to this one. Okay, so that's our jumping off point with spotlighting. Let's jump to the next level. And let's do some spotlighting with stamping. So I wanted to use another retired, retiring stamp set, the Simply Succulents. Let me show you that one. It is on page 32 of the annual catalog. This one is also, the stamp set is 60% off and the dies are 60% off. So this is a great bargain. Okay, let me get all my pieces here. So I wanted to also use these dies, the um, layering circle dies and the stitched rectangle dies are both on the retired list. And these are like um, classic basic stash kind of thing. So the layering circles are on page 172. They don't ha have a discount applied to them. They are regularly priced $35. Um, and then the stitched rectangles are going to be 30% off uh, beginning April 4th. So both of these are great die sets if you are looking to build, build your stash. So what I've done is I've started out with um, the second largest stitched rectangle. And then I have a piece of Mellow Moss that I used for the largest one, and I'm gonna layer those together. And then we're gonna create our spotlight using the layering circles. And so I chose a round um, circle and a scallop circle to use together. So let's do our stamping. So what I want to do is build a flower pot succulent combination. And so I'm going to use some masking, um, some masking paper and the masking technique to do that because I want it to look like the flowers are overflowing from the pot. So whatever you have um, in your picture that you're stamping that you want to look on the outside or closest to the camera, you stamp that first. And then anything that you want tucked behind, you stamp second. So I'm inking the succulents with Memento. I'm just gonna put those right across. Like that. Okay, now I want the flower pot. So I'm gonna mask my flowers. And I only cut along this edge here with my masking paper because I'm, I'm not stamping over it anywhere other place. So that's gonna cover up that stamping so I can stamp the flower pot. So I just overlapped that masking paper by a little bit. But now when you take that off, then the flowers are going to be on the other side. 
of the pot magically. Okay, so let's create our spotlight with our circle. <laughs> Wendy, you're so funny. Yes, our prayers were answered with the black and white gingham. All right, so I'm gonna just pick a spot right in the middle. Try to make it more evenly spaced between the two sides. That's gonna be where our spotlight is. It doesn't have to be centered, you can put it anywhere. I'll show you some more samples. So I'm just making a round circle. Okay, so this is what we're gonna color. You can use anything to color your spotlighting technique. If you have uh, watercolor pencils or regular markers. I have just been on a kick with the Stampin' Blend, so that's what I'm gonna use. So I picked out Old Olive, Mossy Meadow, and Soft Succulent, because you have to, right? We have to. So let's start with that. And I'm just gonna do light to dark again. So this particular succulent is gonna be more of the sagey succulent color. I'm gonna make the inside, like where the shadow would be, a little bit darker. And then we'll blend it all back together. Okay, and then let's make this larger one. We'll do Old Olive. So I did the lighter color and then we'll do the darker color and I'm just gonna pop that darker color out from behind all the leaves. Like where they would be coming out from behind the other. Okay, and then let's smooth that out, going back to the light. These are magic, magic markers. Okay, and we'll finish this off with the Mossy Meadow. I don't really know that any succulents are quite this dark, but I'm not an expert, so, but we're gonna make it interesting by putting these greens in here. I'm getting my therapy today, doing some coloring. Okay, so I forgot these little leaves down here. we will just put those in green. So here I've got three greens. And if you want to make them a little bit even more like succulents, you can add some purple right along the, the tips.
blend that in with the with the green. Okay, I'm not gonna you you know how to color. All right. So there is our spotlight. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. So what you're gonna do now is um mount it. Oh, I don't feel like that was the right size. I already cut that one. I want it a little smaller than that. So let me get my circle punch. And let's see if that works a little bit better. So I, I do like the scallop, but I just want, yeah, we're going to use this one. I think I just picked the wrong one. So that's fine. Um, Cause the scallop would be very pretty. Uh, but I don't want that much of an edge because I want that spotlight to like, um, I want these to, to look like they're a continuous flower. Let's see. I need to just clear the white off of that edge. There we go. Okay. So we'll put that on the black just to give it more of a little pop. Okay, and then it's gonna go right back in where it meets with the other flower. So let's build the rest of the card. So we'll put this on our mossy meadow. And then we're going to make the card base Pear Pizzazz. So Pear Pizzazz is one of the subtles that is going away. This has been a, um, a color for a long time. I think we had, we've had a couple brighter greens like this. We've had a um, certainly celery color. That was, that was the predecessor to pear pizzazz. And before that we had a, um, we had a green galore and then a lighter one that was brighter. So, you know, we kind of, the, as the trends and colors change, it's nice to know that you can kind of pull those trends into your creating by having the most up-to-date colors. So even though it's a little painful when colors go away, it is really refreshing. Okay, so I wanna um, take the time to make sure that I line up where this is supposed to be. like that. So there's our spotlight. And let's finish it. So we'll pull in all the greens here. Let's finish it with a little greeting. I kind of picked a bunch of things because I wasn't sure what I would like. But that's the neat thing about these dyes. Um, that are 60% off. There are actually some beautiful labels along with the ones that actually cut out you know, the, the actual stamp. So this is a really nice die set and they're stitched and they're kind of ornate. So they're really, really beautiful. Let's see. to do. I just want a little, I want a little thanks on there. But I do want a little bit of green. That's too big. Here's a 
tiny little succulent that could go down there. I can't decide where to put it. We're just going to tuck it in here, right in the corner. Okay. We've got all the greens going on here. This is actually old olive ribbon, but old olive and pear pizzazz are very similar um, in tone, so they their accessories go together. So when you look at the last chance list and, and it looks like there's just so much in there, it one of the main reasons is because of the all the colors that are changing out and going away because then anything that is that color, for example, pear pizzazz, if there was ribbon or embellishments or anything like that that coordinate with that color, all those items would be um, retiring as well. So that that's why the list looks so long this year. All right, let me show you a couple other samples. So here's another one with the soft succulents with that soft succulent color, which of course that's going away too. And this is just more random where those circles um, went and it used the stylish shapes. See, this is what I should have done here. Um, just colored, colored this. Maybe I'll go back and I'll color that one of the greens just to, to ha help it be, um, I think that's why I was struggling with it. It was just too much white. And that's part of the joy of the technique is that you have that contrast of black and white and then that little pop of color where it's spotlighted, right? That's um, that's the beauty of it. And then I tried one with the Picture This dies set. If you have this set of dies called Picture This, this is perfect for spotlighting. Um, it cuts those um, circles or rectangles for you so easily. And so I made a lime card with the dies, but also with the hybrid sweet citrus folder, and then just colored those. And it, it's nice with this double stitched edge here, you don't necessarily have to layer all those circles um, on a contrasting color. Okay, so spotlighting, super fun, super easy. Let's look at some other samples here. So the Dragonfly Garden stamp set and the Dragonfly Punch are retiring, so I wanted to use those. And um, boy, those dragonflies are just so beautiful. It's just one of, this has been a great stamp set. I think we've had it for three or four years. Look at the shimmery. Um, Wink of Stella on there. Okay, so there's another example of a circle. 
but you don't have to use circles, obviously. Here's the stitched rectangles with the Hydrangea Haven. This is another amazing um, stamp set with so many greetings and pieces. So this is super simple, but it's very, um, like this is my favorite one that I've made, I think, just so classic. And this bundle is Retiring Cottage Rose. This has been one of my favorites with some amazing dies and that Abigail Rose paper. So I wanted to use that and did a similar rectangle technique. Got to put that Wink of Stella on there. And then I tried one with the Abigail Rose Designer Series paper. Lots of ways you can, you can spotlight. Okay. Hopefully you're thinking of some stamp sets maybe that you have at home that would be perfect for this. So the, so the basics of it, if I haven't already explained, you need your main stamping to be kind of black and white-ish or brown and white or navy blue and white. And then whatever you pop up needs to have the color. Um, and so you stamp it, you know, once and then you cut out that spotlight area and then you can give it a tiny um, matte layer of your darker color and then you just color that popped out piece. So let's do a reversed um, spotlighting technique for our last one. And we're going to use Butterfly Brilliance. This is on the retired list as well. It's a background image. And then I'm gonna use the Stamparatus and we have to, um, we have to talk about the fact that the Stamparatus is also on the retired list. get my colors out here. So the um, Stamparatus is a tool that um, I think has been around uh, for several years. I don't know the exact amount. Maybe somebody out there who's a demonstrator can tell me how many years. Um, and unfortunately, um, Stampin' Up! is um, in litigation with another company that is claiming copyright issues. So they're just decided, um, not easily, but they decided to pull this item for right now or maybe ever. We don't know. So that um, that issue can just be resolved. But unfortunately, this is an amazing tool. So if you don't have it yet and you have wanted it, you definitely need to, to get it. Um, and I would not wait, um, would, would not wait on that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to help me stamp the butterflies. So the butterflies are going to be Part of the spotlight. Actually, I don't think I can use that because this is so big. So I want this to be like that. Pick up our butterflies. Okay, so let's ink. Now the accessories to the Stamparatus are also retiring. So that is um, replacement magnets and the grid paper that goes with it and this foam mat here. So 
if you wanted any of those things, you need to also get those. Um, the mat and the um, the magnets will be on sale April 4th if you want to chance it and wait. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover the front of this with the butterflies. Let's see how they stamped. Pretty good. I'm gonna get them a little bit darker. So the color cardstock that I'm using, I decided this card would have some more retired colors. And so I'm stamping on Sahara Sand. That is one of the neutrals that is leaving. There we go, beautiful. Okay, so now we've got our butterflies. And what I've already done is take a piece of fresh freesia cardstock and I stamped the butterfly background again and then I went ahead and cut those butterflies out with the dye that matches. And before I close that, So we're going to do a reverse spotlight. And what that means is um, instead of the popped up color being up on top, it's going to be underneath. So I'm going to just make the holes with my circle punches. So I'm going to take the two inch circle punch. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to stamp a little bit more of a background. It wouldn't really matter, but I'm going to make it complete. So I picked out some other colors. Um, soft Suede, Rich Razzleberry. They're also retiring. And then this Watercolor Shapes is retiring. This is kind of a staple. I will not be getting rid of that. I love that stamp set. Okay, so I'm going to take some crumb, not crumb cake, Sahara Sand. I'm just going to add some more circles here. just to kind of enhance that background. And then I'm gonna take some rich razzleberry with the smaller circle. I'm gonna stamp it off once to make it lighter. And we'll put a few of those in here. So I'm just kind of making actually the collage on the front of the card. And then I was going to use this stamp set. This is actually in the mini catalog, but it is also on the retired list. And I love to put those words on my card fronts. So I'm going to take this little heartfelt and just kind of layer that on top as well. Just to add to the background. And that was in soft suede. You are gonna, I think, love the new brown, the pecan pie. It's very similar, it looks like, I mean, I haven't seen it in person, to um, cinnamon cider, which was one of my favorite browns ever. So, okay, now we're gonna use the circle punches. So I'm just gonna make two spotlights on here since we have these butterflies. So I'm gonna do this one right here. So this is the wrong one. I'm gonna do the bigger one here on this bigger butterfly. like that. And then I'm gonna use the one and three fourths inch, like, let's see. Yeah, like that. Okay, so we could save these and make another little 
collage card out of them, so we don't, won't get rid of those. So now what I do is I take the butterflies that I cut out before, and we're going to spotlight them underneath. So I think these are the two right here. So what you're going to do going to add a little bit of glue underneath the circle so that when I find the right spot here, so I'm going to match up so I'm matching up those lines. And then this one. Like that. Okay, I know this looks confusing, but stick with me here. So now, I'm going to trim off the extra. Okay, and then we'll make it pop by adding some paper underneath. So I picked Blackberry Bliss. Blackberry Bliss is staying, thankfully, because Fresh Freesia and Blackberry Bliss are like really good friends. And then we'll add our rich Razzleberry card base. Okay, so that is the reverse spotlighting. You can see why that is. Let's make this card a two and a uh, card within a card. And let's just, since we have our colors out, let's use them. And we have all those butterflies to use. So let's, this is my inside card. So you'll see this one, it's opened. And then we're going to take our thanks from this same stamp set here. In the soft suede. All right, so the round stamp letty is from this stamp set, Watercolor Shapes. It's one of those essentials, I love it. Let me, let me look it up really quickly and tell you exactly where it's at. It's on page 102, right here. 
So this is on the retired list, which is why I'm using it, but I will not be getting rid of mine because I love, I love the shapes. <clears throat> so you could even, um, you know, on the inside, you could put these back in, right? Or put them over here. That would be kind of cute to add those back in. What a fun little, little card. Could put a couple more butterflies on there. All right, so there is our card within a card with our reverse spotlighting technique. And let's see, I think we just need to put a couple little embellishments on there. Lots of great new embellishments are, are coming in the new book, so worries. These are carrying over. I kind of liked the shape of this because it kind of looked a little bit like that butterfly body. There we go. Okay. Reverse spotlighting. Let's check out the cards here one more time. And as always, I love to know what you think you need to try. What have you not done? What are you going to try to do? Let's look at these. Okay, so we've got our reverse. Oops, I had a couple more samples. Show your reverse spot. Let's see that. Here we go. Here's another reverse spotlighting um, sample. This is with the Happiness Abounds bundle. This is also a retiring um, stamp set and die set. Um, again, stamped on designer series paper. And then this is the Queen Bee stamp set from the mini catalog. Um, has a similar um, collage effect that I did with the butterfly card. Um, and this time I, when I reverse spotlighted, I just kept it white to kind of actually reverse the color as well. So you could, you've got lots of options there. Okay, so that was reverse spotlighting. And then we've got regular spotlighting. Spotlighting on designer series paper. <clears throat> with all different shapes. I'm just reading your comments now. Good, I'm glad you like this technique. If you haven't um, done it for a while, you definitely need to try it again and just like look at your stamp sets with new eyes or your paper and just say, oh, could I pop something out of that just to give it a little, um, a little highlight. Lots of love for the butterfly card. Thank you. Appreciate that. I'm really sad about those butterflies. I love those, of course. Wonderful. So I'm going to uh, create a video this weekend uh, where I will actually walk walk you through the um, the retiring lists and just chat a little bit more about those changes and transitions if you are interested in that you can look for that video as well be more information informational and not um, full of stamping but um, sometimes it's easier than having to sit down and read the re the retired last chance list on your own to just kind of walk through with somebody else and mark as I've marked so that is hopefully to make it easier thank you Luddy thank you Judy Oh, you guys are awesome. So awesome. All right. So uh, to wrap up, 
um, last day of March today. So you can still order today if you want to and use my hostess code and um, receive March's incentive. You can wait until April um, to, to for the next code. You can wait until April 4th for the things on the last chance list that are um, on sale. Um, and then look in your newsletter coming April 1st so that you get all the information about, for me, about what's happening um, in April. So uh, lots of things going on. And of course, there will be a link um, and a sign up for the new catalog kickoff event when that happens um, very soon in May. So um, thank you so much, as always, for taking some time to stamp with me. I hope that you um, walk away inspired. That's always my goal to um, try something new or retry something um, and get out your stuff and stamp and make some cards for all those people that you care about because they need to hear from you. So um, until next time, thank you so much. Goodbye. <music>